Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. This week we're going to go ahead and have a reading lesson um, about main ideas and key details in a nonfiction text. Before we even get started, I want to congratulate you for one month of virtual learning. You've done such an incredible job. You've developed um, virtual accountability, virtual um, independence, and I'm just so very proud of you and I'm honored to be your teacher. All right, let's get started with the reading lesson. Right. Sometimes, you know, it takes a while. Here we go. All right. So this week, remember that we're going to go ahead and we are going to continue to practice identifying main idea and key details in nonfiction text. These are our week objectives. You are going to read independently, making, uh, making choices using Google Class. You're going to type the main idea and key details in a graphic organizer. You're going to listen to chapter two of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by using your listening tools and, and your skills. And you're going to go ahead and type comprehension answers to text specific questions. Right, before we even continue with main idea and key details, I want to remind you that good readers have skills already. All of you have special skills before you even touch books, open books, and we're going to talk about and we're going to practice those skills. I'm going to model those skills too while I read so that you can do it at home too. So what do good readers do? Good readers use strategies. They ask questions before, during, and after a text. They talk about books, they practice their reading, they um, take care of books, etc. Now, we also use special questions before, during, and after our reading. We predict our learning. That means that we make predictions before we um, read a text, right? We ask questions. During our reading, we determine our learning. We should pause and we should think, what have I learned so far? And if you cannot answer that question, that means that you need to go back and reread the text because what good is it if you read a book and you don't even remember it, right? That means that we didn't make our learning concrete. And then after we finish reading, my friends, we're going to share our new learning. Maybe we want to share it with our friends. Maybe we want to share it with our family members. You can even share it with your stuffed animals or your pets. As long as you're communicating your learning with someone, even yourself, I think that that is a very, very important skill. Right, like I mentioned before, the main idea is what the text is mo mostly about. Okay, um, so clues to identify the main idea. We're going to look at the title and the pictures. Um, suggestion, and it says sometimes the main idea is in the first and last sentence. This is um, the case in this grade level, um, which is third grade. And usually in primary, we see that a lot. But when you get older, the main idea might be somewhere else in the text. And we just really need to pay attention to our reading, right? And then we're going to look for clue words that are repeated. This week, go ahead and read Making Choices, which is Ben Franklin's excerpt, Two Cents, and also the story, The Ants and the Grass. Grasshopper by Aesop. I'm going to go ahead and read Money, and I'm going to model the reading strategies of before, during, and after, and I'm going to identify main idea and key details. Let's get started. Money. All right, here is our um, table of contents, and I want to go back. Um, this is the cover of my book. And before I even get started with, the, with reading the text money, I want to make some predictions, okay? I'm gonna look at this photograph and I'm gonna go ahead and make predictions what the story will be about. Okay, there's a piggy, a piggy bank. Maybe this story is about saving money. I noticed that there are a lot of different coins. Maybe this book will be about international money um, that's being collected. Um, perhaps about the history of money, maybe money around the world, right? These are all predictions that I'm making. All right, let's get started with our reading. 
see the table of contents and it says what can people do with money, how do people start using money, when did coins and paper money start, what kinds of money do people use today? Ah, look, look at number two, chapter two. How did people start using money? That's kind of the history of money, right? One of my predictions was right. right. What can people do with money? People can earn money. People can spend money. They can pay for a movie ticket or a book. People can save money. Loose change can be put into a purse or wallet or dropped into a piggy bank. Some people lend money. Other people spend money. You may give it to a charity, a school, or people in need. Schools and communities often have bake sales and plan sales to raise money. Wow, look at these children. I noticed in this photograph that the children are laughing, maybe because they're selling some desserts and they're making their money. I see their, their here. There's a caption, let's read. Have you ever been part of a bake sale to raise money? Have you done that before in your community? I would love to hear about it if you have. Some people save their money. Long ago, people hid their money to keep it safe. Some people even buried it. Now people can put their savings in banks. Banks keep money in safes. It's safe, Fort and Fort Knox. Gold bullion is kept safe in Fort Knox, Kentucky. The vaults are made of steel and concrete. The building itself is bomb proof. Wow, bomb proof. I didn't even know that existed. That's interesting. Bank tellers help customers with many banking services. This photo of the bank vault is in Chicago in a, in a Chicago bank with ticket 1914. All right, I'm going to pause here. Remember that before I started, I using I, I used reading strategies, right? And I made predictions. I'm gonna pause here because I'm approaching the middle of my book and I'm going to ask questions now because remember I want to make my learning concrete all right who is this story for who is this story for you know what it's about money right and I think this book is made for me I need to learn about money one day you're going to grow up and you need to learn how to manage your money Maybe you're going to travel around the world and you need to learn what different bills and coins look like. What is this story about? What is this story about? It's about money, right? And it's about the history of money and how the um, people use it around the world. Where does this story take place? It takes place all over the world. Now they're talking about Chicago, they're talking about Kentucky. So it's sticking in different places. Okay, all right, we're gonna go ahead and continue. How do people start using money? In early times, people didn't use money. Instead, they traded to get what they needed. A person who had chickens might have traded eggs for a loaf of bread. A person who made shoes might have swapped a pair of boots for some cloth. This kind of trading is called bartering. Later, people started using objects such as feathers, salt, and stones as money. In North America, some groups of Native Americans used colored beads made from shells and strung together as belts or sashes. These objects were called wampum, shell exchange. Cowrie shells were used as money in China more than 3,500 years ago. They were still being used in Africa in the 1800s. Wow, this is super interesting because now I'm learning about the history of money, right? And remember that my objective is to find the main idea and key details about this text. Pause and think. What is the main idea? Do you have it? What are some supporting details that you have seen throughout the pages? I want you to think about it. Let's continue. All right, in Google Classroom, you are gonna go ahead and have a graphic organizer that looks like this. 
Remember that you're going to be reading a, um, a nonfiction text titled Making Choices, and it will be about money, okay? And you will fill out a chart of graphic organizing that looks like this. Main idea, key details. What was my main idea and key details? Well, money can be used in different ways, and it has an interesting history. That's what my course was mostly about. Here I have some key details. In the text, it states that money can be used to buy things like a movie ticket or a book, as found on page two. Many people choose to donate their money to charities. That's on page three. Remember the children that were selling lemonade and desserts? On page six, it states that humans started to trade things um, or items instead of money. And lastly, Next, I learned that shells were used as money in many different countries. All right, you will find this on Google Classroom. Next, let's talk about listening to audio read alongs. Remember that I really want you to focus and hone in on um, using those reading strategies, okay? When I put my pair of earphones on, friends, I really want you to pause, stay still, and really listen to this story because remember that your objective is also to answer text dependent questions, okay? So during your reading, you're going to visualize, you're going to see what the story is about, okay? You're gonna feel what the story is teaching you. You're gonna use your senses to understand the story and you're gonna go ahead and synthesize that information. When you synthesize, friends, you are combining what you already know with new information, and you will be able to answer those text-dependent questions. I love you so much, and I hope to see you on Wednesday. This is the end of our reading lesson, and so happy to see you, okay? See you soon, bye.